Hey there, and welcome to this week's Prepare Like a Pro Live Chats Friday show. This week's key topic is all about does online coaching make money? If you're a strength and conditioning coach or a personal trainer, sick of relying on working 30 plus sessions per week, then this episode is definitely for you. And for the footballers out there, make sure to stick around for this week's power tip, which is all about how is the AFL game played and what are the biggest AFL grounds in the league. If you're new to the YouTube channel, make sure to click the subscribe button on the uh, during this episode. And if you are listening in the podcasting world and you enjoy our podcasts, please subscribe and leave a review. On this episode, I'll update you on all the episodes to be released for the upcoming week, as well as our live events uh, scheduled in for the upcoming week. Make sure to screenshot this episode and tag us on Instagram so we can share it. We'd love to see who is enjoying our content. In terms of this week's key topic, all of all about online coaching and whether it can make money. So for myself, in my experience, I've been a personal trainer for the first six years of my career. I've been in the industry now for 12 years, nearly going on 13. First six years was a personal trainer across a whole range of different uh, personal training setups, your fitness first, where you're paying that rent base. Um, You've got your PT studios. Uh, I've worked in different ranges from bodybuilding style gyms to CrossFit gyms Uh, and typically the models are always going to be the same you pretty much are are being paid for your time the perk of online coaching and online programs is that you can start to develop systems and build passive income so you're not constantly reliant on getting financial security and trading time for money so that's a huge perk for online coaching it's something that I've brought into my business model at Propel Like a Pro for the last couple of years and I highly recommend it to all personal trainers and strength conditioning coaches. It will make for a more resilient business, particularly in these times um, during COVID. There's periods where it, it's out of your control and you're not able to train clients. Thankfully, that's not happening as often as it, as it was over the last three years. However, you never know what the future lies. So if you can have a resilient business that can bring money in no matter the circumstance, uh, then that's a huge bonus for your business model. So uh, starting off, my recommendation if you're wanting to build an online coaching business would be to provide a combination of online consultation so you get that face-to-face connection, which no doubt for the personal trainers and the industry coaches listening, that's why you'd love the industry or one of the main reasons why is that human connection. And I think that will be no doubt a strength of yours. So we want to make sure that you're capitalising on that uh, and that you're enjoying the programming side of things as well by getting um, that one-to-one access or, or you might be doing in a group setting that group access to the athletes or clients that are on your program. So still facilitate that via Zoom and then have either Google Sheets or an app like Team Builder to facilitate your programs where the clients and athletes can access the program um, through the app and it can act like a training diary so you can observe their progress, they can you can send them out progress reports to help boost motivation and you're really encouraging the members to have uh, autonomy on their motivation. They're not relying on seeing you all the time. You're becoming more like a coach rather than a trainer, so to speak. So the motivation and the drive is coming from them. You're simply just structuring um, the program and the, and the schedule to suit their goals. Um, so it's also quite refreshing to have these clients because they're not relying on you. They're actually developing um themselves and then you're there simply as a support uh, and a soundboard to ask questions so it also complements the the clients that you might be seeing on a weekly basis in that sense Uh, and i've definitely found it's a um a refreshing coaching experience by having the members um in building their own um, drive and and really um funneling down to what is important for them and why do they want to start training what what are are the results that they want to achieve so from a um, money point of view, absolutely you can make money with online coaching and programming. You just need to set up a good system um, that works for you, that's sustainable. And like I said, has that combination of program, but also that human connection. So members are going to stay on your program for longer because they feel like they've got that support and they're still getting that coaching through asking you questions on how they should be going about their program. So as we know, as strength conditioning coaches, the context is huge. So by you being able to sell the program and how important it is to do 
certain warm-up protocols before a particular lift, why it's important to, to lift heavy, why it's important to lift fast, uh, and all, all the things that a coach can provide to make the pro- really bring life to the program. Um, so have that, whether that be on Zoom or a phone call, whatever that connection piece is, that's really, really important. And I think it's really important from a business point of view for uh, retaining those members. And ultimately, we want the clients on the program for a longer period of time to be able to get the results that they desire. So uh, retaining members is is hugely important. And as the old saying goes, it's always much easier to save a client on your program than try and find a new one. So I highly recommend bringing in a digital product into your service-based business. And then over time, you can start to find the sweet spot on how many sessions um, do you do face-to-face, how many sessions are you doing online, and um, what what, do you, what is really optimal for you in terms of your business model, uh, how, how much percentage are you making from your programming compared to your face-to-face coaching. And if you can get to a point where you're getting 50-50, now that if you're 100% reliant on trading your time for money and then you get to a point in a year to two years time where you're 50 50 um, then when it's a rainy day and you can't train clients or due to COVID or whatever the reason might be maybe you get a severe injury and you're not able to train your clients um, you, you still have a good option in your programming option so it's your uh, family or your own financial security is in a better place so definitely start if you need any help make sure to reach out and I know it can take a bit of a, it's a steep learning curve going online. Uh, if you haven't got a social media presence, if you haven't got an email list, if you haven't got a website, these things can take time to build them up, um, but the support's there. So if you have any questions or queries, make sure to reach out to me and email me at jack at preparelikeapro.com or you can direct message me on Instagram or any of your socials. So that's what this week's key topic for all the coaches out there. And for this week's power tip for footballers, it's all about how the AFL game is played and what are the biggest AFL grounds in the league. So ground dimension, the ground is marked out with an outer boundary, a centre square, 50 metre and a centre circle, which is 10 metres, that dictates the positioning of the ruckman and the centre bounce. The centre square limits the number of players at a centre bounce, which is four per team. These players are typically known as the midfielders of each team and primary role is to win possession and move the ball towards their goals. So our biggest ground, square per metres, MCG is over 20,181 metres. The Gabba is just over 20,000, which is second, 20,027 metres. University of Tasmania, which was interesting to me, is third, 19,000, just shy, 929. TO Studio uh, Stadium is 18,555. Amy Stadium, 17,235. The Giant Stadium, is sixth at 16,838. Subiaco, 16,768 metres. SCG, 16,556. Marvel Stadium, 16,134. Adelaide Oval, 16,132, just shy. Blundstone Arena, 15,528. And GMHBA Stadium, 15,354. So there's our sort of top most popular stadiums um, obviously, the duration, so for those new to the game, it's four 20-minute quarters with time on, the AFL game. So time on is stopped after a score until the play is restarted. So when the ball goes out of bounds, it needs to be thrown in, and the umpires can call time off at their discretion to manage injuries and any of the other on-field incidents. These time off periods usually result in each quarter going for 30 minutes. Players in a AFL-VFL game will have... A VFL game will have 23 players, 18, 18 on the field, same as the AFL, and five on the bench, ready for rotation. AFL will have 22, so four on the bench, and a medical sub. So they can come in when a player has been ruled out due to an injury. Players on the field are typically grouped into either the midfield, rucks, backline, also known as defenders, and the forwards. Team objective, the objective of both teams is to score more points than your opposition by kicking the ball between the middle two posts. So there's four posts. The middle two posts will get you six points and the outside post will get you one point. That's a quick little intro to the game for those that haven't, for our international listeners and for those that haven't um, watched an AFL game or, or are thinking of joining and you want a little bit more information. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on any of these social platforms. 
Uh, but super excited to say where our academy now is less than eight weeks away from releasing in July 1st. So if you haven't joined the waitlist, there's still 48 spots left. This is a knowledge base that which will contain worksheets, online courses, and a community of like-minded individuals. We've got an academy suited for strength and conditioning coaches, specifically that want to not only work in elite sport, but also have their own online business and also footballers. So it's a value add. So if you're on our online performance program or you're working with one of our coaches in a uh, one-on-one sessions, you get the, the academy as a value add, so you get it for free. If you're not on our program or you're not working with our uh, coaches, maybe you can't afford it or, you, or uh, it's not something that you're currently doing, but you do want access to our content, you can join the academy for a $20 uh, rate per month. So great value in there. It has its own podcast where all the workshops and all the events that we do through the academy, all that exclusive content will also be its own private podcast. So that's content that won't be live publicly. And you'll be able to catch up with myself uh, at least once a month for a live Q&A and a webinar. And there'll be regular catch-ups in the community as well. So highly recommend whether you're a strength edition coach looking to build your own business and work in elite sport or you're a footballer looking to take your game to the next level to join our waitlist. There's 48 spots left. The waitlist will receive a free month on our academy and it's going to be an early bird price of only $20 a month and that will never change for the waitlist uh, people. So if you're interested, make sure to head over to academyprepareliceapro.com.au and you can click the link in our show notes.